is at 5 p.m. on Sunday, the 25th of November, will not be counted, but may still be charged. Best of luck. Yes, good luck. It's a condition rarely out of the news. But what do we really know about the dangers of diabetes and the risks of skipping injections for insulin-dependent sufferers? One person now bitterly aware of the risks is Georgia Wood, who found at that by skipping her injections, she could keep her weight down and achieve the perfect figure. But that has come at a terrible cost. Well, Georgia joins us now along with uh, GP Dr Dawn Harper. And welcome both. And thank you for talking welcome. about this. A very important thing to discuss. You were healthy up until the age of, of 11, weren't yes. you? And you were in America. Yes. So how did it start to change for you? I just started to notice that I was drinking excessive amounts of water and taking huge jugs of water to bed. And then I'd always been sort of at that age what everyone sort of called puppy fat, but my weight was dropping quite dramatically and obviously when people were complimenting me. Mm. Um, but I also started to feel extremely tired, lethargic, just ill, so I sort of, I, I did notice I didn't feel very well. And the doctors in America weren't quite sure what it was, but you mm. came back to the UK um, on a holiday and while you were here you visited a doctor and very quickly they diagnosed what it was. Yes. So, what were your thoughts and feelings to this at the time? Because this was type 1 diabetes, mm. so this was, this was insulin dependent. Mm. So, how many times were you having, because this is a whole management programme that comes with this, and you're 11 years old, mm. so how did that work? Um, my mum very quickly sort of became very involved. Um, to leave the hospital, I had to learn to inject myself very quickly. But it was, I was very lucky that she sort of took on a lot of the responsibility. Mm. And it was a slow sort of learning when I came out of hospital because I'd sort of come across different um, things that I'd have to then sort of different challenges mm. I'd have to sort of get over but my family were very supportive. When did your relationship with food change do you think? Um, I think probably when I was sort of 15, 16 I'd, I'd started to put on, I'd put on quite a lot of weight by that time and I was very uncomfortable with my weight which I think made me very uncomfortable around food so I didn't like to be seen with food or, or anything associated with food so if anyone asked me if I enjoyed cooking it was a definite no. But they would have said as a, as a new diabetic the risks mm. were pointed out how important it is yes, to yeah, keep those are. injections regular. Mm. Yeah they do they, they, they do tell you about the risks but a lot of the time they use the words that it will happen to you when you get older and at sort of 11 and 12 you think oh gosh well by that time especially when I was by the time I was 16 it was being reiterated to me because my sugar levels were so high but it Again, when you're 16 and older seems a long way. So what you decided away. to do then was to cut out some of those injections yes. and attempt to live life almost without saying that you were a diabetic mm. um, and uh, and that way you noticed that your weight then started to drop again. Yes, yeah, it, and very sort of slowly at first but then sort of quite dramatically and then other people would notice which sort of spurred me on. And the symptoms started to return um, and you had to hide it from everybody, including your family. Yes, which I think I, at that point at sort of 17 you're, you, you sleep and eat at home but you, you leave and sort of carry on having your life so I was able to hide it, to hide it very well. I was saying that when you came and sat down that both my mum and my brother are both type 1 mm. diabetics and when they go low, when their blood sugar goes low, you can tell um, you know, my mum, my mum starts to get a bit, a bit disorientated. Um, so, how come you managed to hide that? My sugar levels would, ne I would never have hypos because I was running them so high. So really, I could function as a normal person, but I would hide the fact of how ill I was yeah. and how much I was sort of sleeping and drinking. It was easy for, for me to hide that from people. Well, when you were 18, um, this was in 2000, the October, you'd been for a night out, you were in the Isle of Wight on holiday, and you'd come back, you hadn't felt quite right all day. Mm. And you actually collapsed when you got home, didn't you? Yes. So yeah. at this moment, surely people must have been Gun to suspect when you went into hospital, surely they would have said to you, being being type one diabetic, that maybe you weren't looking after yourself properly. That was never that was never said to me. It was a lot of the time. It was when people looked at my sugar level results. It was 
that I'd had a virus or I would say, oh, I haven't felt very well. And when you are ill, your sugar levels rise. Do you get quite clever with it then? You become an amazing liar, you become really intelligent and you learn a lot more ab about diabetes, really, and not in a good way. So you've got st stabbing pains in your hands? Mm, I get it all over my body. Do you? Yeah. Um, and so, the, so you went into rehab and yes. you had two bouts of, mm. of rehab. Um, now, thankfully, the psychological aspect of this was taken in hand. Unfortunately, the physical aspect mm. of this is not able to be taken mm. in hand. What damage have you done to yourself? Um, I now have had two large eye operations to remove the vitreous gel from both eyes, so I'm now partially sighted, which has been the scariest thing I've been through with everything really so I get the nerve pain all over my body and my heart beats too fast all the time so I suffer a lot with exhausted being with being exhausted and tired and what have you been told of the long-term repercussions a lot of the time I'm told with nerve damage that it's irreversible so the damage that I've done won't it won't ever get better um, with my eyes really I think they just try to keep them stable but I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be able to keep the sight I've got left. And your fiancé, um, yeah. Ross, you rely on him very heavily, don't you, yes. to look after you, and you, you can't work because of no, what's happened to I you. I do bits and pieces. I'm working in a, a vintage tea room just to kind of get my confidence So you back. are doing bits and pieces? Yes, yeah, I'd love to. And then there's the other side of it as well, about wanting to start a family. Yes. And you, you did fall pregnant, didn't you? Yes, I did, last and year. Last year, and sadly because of your health. And it, mm. it was very, they said it would put too much stress on your body to My body is under a lot of baby. stress, yes, yeah. yeah. What do you say to, to anyone who's thinking of regulating their weight the way you mm. did if they're type 1 diabetic? There, there's nothing that, that, that's worth risking your health to be thin. It's just, it's not important. It's people will love you for you and those people that love you for that are the people that you want around you. It's, if I could go back, yeah, I mean, I know that's not possible, but it's, it's just not worth where I am now. And I, I've lost a lot of being able to go, I can't drive anymore, I need help, I can't sort of go shopping on my own, and I, I was a very independent Well, person. at 16, as you were alluding to earlier on, at 16, you do feel you're invincible, mm, don't you? You um, really do. You didn't realise how quickly it was going to catch up with you. Mm, and, I'm, and I still feel young, I'm nearly 30, but I, I don't feel old and I'm not old, and it's, yeah. it has changed my life considerably. So that is a warning and a half. Isn't it just? Isn't it just? I mean, you look at George, doesn't she look great? Mm. But there is no doubt that when you're diagnosed with diabetes, it's so important that you have good sugar control. We don't fully understand why all these complications happen. But certainly losing your eyesight, kidney disease, heart disease, all these sorts of things are very directly linked to poor diabetic control. And hey, you know, when you're 16, you do think you're invincible. And being told that something might happen to you when you're older, you kind of don't necessarily take that on board so listening to your story and hearing you just we were talking earlier about mm. just how bad your vision is you know I think I'm so glad you've come to tell your story you're very very brave to do so because anybody out there who's thinking of, of playing around with their diabetic control you really are playing Russian roulette and we need to point out so it's very important to point out the difference between type 1 and type 2 absolutely so type 1 we used to always call juvenile onset it's the t it's the type of diabetes where your own body attacks your pancreas it's just, which is where we produce our insulin and insulin is needed to control sugar type 2 tends to be more linked to weight gain and lifestyle so what happened to you was an immune reaction um, and the, the two are very different most people with type 1 will be on insulin and some type 2s will need insulin but often with type 2 we can manage that with diet and lifestyle yeah. and sometimes some drugs by mouth mm -hmm. what do you look for if you think that you might be diabetic I think George's story for a type 1 diabetic is absolutely classic. So she says she was really thirsty all the time. She needed to wee quite a lot mm, as well, didn't yeah. you? Um, but that fatigue, that lethargy, just feeling exhausted and also unexplained weight loss. Those four things to me in a young person 
we need to check diabetes. And if you do find out that you are diabetic, then make sure that you manage it properly because mm, there's yeah. no shortcut. Yeah. No. Absolutely not. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very thank much you. indeed. Thank, thank you, Dawn. You. Well, if you would like help or information about anything we've just discussed, please visit our website, itv.com forward slash this morning. Uh, Strictly sparring partners Craig Revel, Horwood and Anne Whittacombe are here right after the break. Thank you.